Hello everyone! In the last video, we talked about film formats. And at the end of that video, we asked ourselves, are focal length equivalent between formats? Of course not, right? But today we will explore focal lengths and also a great tool, which is perspective. So, perspective is one of the best tools we have to express ourselves as photographers. To understand their effects, we first need to talk about focal length. So, the focal length is basically the distance between the film plane, or where, where the sensor is, and the center of the lens. So, let's say for this, for example, the film plane is here. Uh, if you don't know where it is, it is usually marked with that circle with a line in between, right? This represents where the sensor is, or the film plane. So, for this lens, this is a 50 millimeter lens, so the focal length is 50 millimeter. It, it means that from this plane, 50 millimeter, about here, is the center of the lens, right? So this is where the light crosses, and this is why the smaller the focal length you have, the smaller you have, the wider the angle of view is, and the longer the focal length you have, then of course, the narrower the angle of view will be, All right? In the middle, we have the standard lens, which is about the diagonal. If we have a shorter focal length, it's considered a wide angle, right? And if we have longer than that standard focal length, it's considered to be a teleobjective. That's as simple as that. So in the middle, we have the standard lens. So for example, in the 35 millimeter world, so we had a 35 millimeter film, we had 24 by 36 millimeter frame, and we had a diagonal, right, of about 43 millimeter, the diagonal, right? Uh, it's the same thing with a uh, DSLR, so it's 24 by 36 millimeter frame size, and the diagonal is the same, 30, about uh, 43 millimeter. And we consider, Okay. In photography, it's not really exact science. Yeah. It's just a pinch of salt, you know, a little bit of this, you know. So, it's not 43 millimeter that we consider a standard lens. It's around 43 millimeter. So, this is a 50, and we consider this as the most popular standard lens there is, you know. A nifty 50. <laughs> Back in the old days, pretty much all the cameras out there had a lens on them and it was a standard perspective, right? So this, for example, is a 75 millimeter lens on a 645 format, which is the standard. And on this one, it's also the standard on a 6x9, it's a 105, right? So, you have any camera, let's say this one, this is a APS-C Fuji, which is really, really amazing, by the way. <clears throat> so, it's an APS-C sensor size, which is a bit smaller, and the uh, standard focal length for these cameras is around 30 millimeter. Around, you know? So, if we have something that is smaller than 30 millimeter as a focal length, it's considered as a wide. And if it's longer than 30, then it's considered as a teleobjective. For example, this is a 56 millimeter uh, lens, so it's considered as a teleobjective. Uh, what about other formats we talked about? For example, you know, 
a uh, six by six medium format Hasselblad, so six by six diagonal, we're around 80 millimeter. At around 80 millimeter, it's what we consider to be a standard objective. Now, if we use four by five, we consider it's about 150 millimeter. And if we use eight by 10, it's about 300 millimeters. See, so a 300 millimeter lens Usually we say, oh, wow, that's a huge telephoto you have there. But in 8x10, it's just a standard lens. Hmm. So now that we know the three types of uh, objective, wide, normal, and teleobjective, what about perspective? Well, around 43, 435 millimeter, right, where we have the standard lens, it's considered to be the same kind of perspective as a human eye. Now, what do we do with a wide angle? Is it only to get more information in our frame? Mm, can be, but the main reason to use a wide is to have a really spacious perspective. So, a few examples. Uh, if you are a real estate agent, you have all the advantage in the world of using a wide angle lens because the houses that you will photograph will look much bigger than it is with a lot of room, a lot of space, you know, a lot of space between objects. So, uh, of course, if you're a buyer, it's not great because you're going to see all those nice pictures and when you get there, oh, it's smaller and then than you thought it would be, you know, uh, but that's what it is. And uh, with a teleobjective, what can you do? Well, with a teleobjective, you can compress planes together, right? You can make the viewer feel kind of entrapped in your image because everything is smooshed together, right? Another reason uh, why perspective is important is about portraits, right? So uh, if you make a portrait of someone using something really wide, like a fisheye, uh, it's not a really great, it's not flattering, right? So an example here show you a picture of me shot with a fisheye. Uh, obviously, we don't even see the ears, uh, you just see my nose, my big ugly teeth, and that's about it, right? That's not a real good portrait. If we go to something uh, similar to, uh, to many people use, this is the front-facing camera of a cell phone. It's, uh, it's kind of a wide uh, lens, but not as wide as the fisheye. So, we still cannot see the ears. <laughs> it's a joke, of course, because of that thing I have on my head. But uh, it's a bit better. And if we go to something which is a... This is a picture of me, obviously, with a 50 millimeter, uh, with this exact camera, an Nikon F6 with a 50 uh, on it. And this is okay, right? Um, this is what the human eye sees if you're close from me. But what people see in what people, when people look at people, they usually see something more like this. So this is just a bit uh, tilly, right? Uh, it's uh, shot at uh, 82 millimeter to be precise. So in studio, I, I, I usually uh, use this thing. So just a little bit tilly will give you more normal, um, more. It will give you more natural uh, portraits, more flattering. You see both ears, uh, uh, the face is not too flat, something okay. So, my message today is before using your zoom ring, ask yourself what is the perspective you want to use. You want to compress stuff, you want to give a roomy a spacey effect, right? Or just something uh, flattering for the subject. 
or exaggerate something right you can exaggerate the size of an object compared to something else uh, so yeah that's it that's the message for today so before using the zoom ring ask yourself what is the perspective you really want to use and then move with your legs to the proper place and use the zoom at the focal of your choice that is not just the focal length of your choice to frame correctly where you are but also to use the perspective that you want right? so that's a lot but uh, go ahead practice and i will always be here to encourage you to go out experiment and have fun right so thanks for being there please subscribe like the video, share your experiences in the comments below and may the photo be with you.